Hey everyone, I'm Nerdy, and this is my review of The Last of Us Remastered. The remaster was released in July of 2014 for the PlayStation 4. I didn't play it until 2020 because it takes me forever to play games that I've owned for years. Anyways, let's get into the review. The year is 2033. 20 years after a horrifying pandemic has taken out 60% of the population. This pandemic is caused by a parasitic fungal infection that lives in the host while the host is still alive. It mutates the host's body to terrifying degrees and causes the host to become hyper-aggressive. Survivors find their homes in either heavily policed quarantine zones, nomadic groups, or independent settlements. This is the world that Joel lives in. He's a smuggler trying to survive in a quarantine zone located in what was Boston. Through a series of events, he was eventually coerced into smuggling a child named Ellie out of the quarantine zone and into the Capitol building of Boston to meet with other Firefly Milita operatives. The Fireflies themselves are a revolutionary militia group tasked with trying to make the world better than what it currently is. And that's all I'm going to tell you about the story. Somehow I was lucky enough to make it like seven-ish years without having anything spoiled from the story for me, and I'm going to keep that fucking vibe going. Artifacts are generally notes or personal belongings that give us a better understanding of the people who live or lived in this world. I thought this was a neat way to further flesh out the world. Also, I would totally be picking up Left Behind notes to learn more about abandoned spaces and the people who left it. The next collectible are comics, specifically a series called Savage Starlight. When Joel picks them up, he'll make a comment noting that these are the ones that Ellie enjoys. I loved this little detail in a collectible. It shows us in a small way Joel's growing fondness towards Ellie. Firefly pendants are just the firefly tags with like the insignia on one side and the member name and number on the other side. The last collectible type are the training manuals which teach Joel how to upgrade craftable things. Speaking of crafting, Joel can do it on the fly as long as he has the ingredients. From his backpack, he can craft health kits, Molotov cocktails, shivs, nail bombs, and smoke bombs. I never touch the smoke bombs, so I can't comment on them, but the nail bombs are top notch. You can use them either in a grenade-like fashion or set them up like a landmine. I use them as grenades and found them to be very useful. The Molotovs were very useful as well, and word of advice, keep a shiv on you at all times. They can get a clicker off your neck if a clicker gets a hold of you. Oh, you can also upgrade your melee weapons as well. And while we're talking about melee weapons, let me list them out for you. There are the aforementioned shivs, there are 2x4s, there are baseball bats, there are pipes, there are machetes, and there are hatchets. I used the upgraded pipe mostly, but if I found like a machete or a hatchet, I would use them instead. The upgraded pipe served me well, even though I did try to avoid the melee confrontations. I play a little bit more chaotically when monsters are right up on me, but sometimes that's unavoidable. It's time to talk guns. So for handguns, we get the 9mm pistol, the revolver, the shorty, which is a shotgun that is chopped into a pistol-like gun, and El Diablo. Personally, I switched between the revolver and the 9mm when I didn't have ammo for El Diablo. El Diablo is a hunting revolver with sights. It's got high damage, but it's also slow to reload, and its ammo is pretty rare to find. But honestly, I thought it was worth it. We also get a hunting rifle, a shotgun, a flamethrower, a military sniper, and an assault rifle. I never touched the flamethrower, to be honest. And I really didn't mess around with the shotgun because I don't really mess around a lot with shotguns in games like this when I have like a plethora of other, I mean, better weapons cancel me if you must but whatever i fucking really liked the military sniper 
I tried to use the hunting rifle as often as possible. It's great. These weapons are also upgradable through workbenches that are scattered throughout the game. Upgrade things like reload speed, clip capacity, fire rate, power range, recoil, scopes, spreads, draw speed, armor piercing, and you can even create a second holster for Joel. I wanted to max out the El Diablo, but it's a late in game gun, so I didn't quite get to. But I also upgraded the bow a bit, the pistol, the revolver, and the hunting rifle. You can play The Last of Us in either a stealth-like mode or more of an aggressive mode. I personally tried a stealth mode, but like, I failed at it a bunch of times, so <laughs> maybe a hybrid mode. To aid in your stealth playthrough, you can pick up bottles and bricks and throw them at enemies to distract them, or to hit them and stun them. I did not use this action a lot simply because I don't trust my aim in throwing things. I mean, unless I'm throwing nail bombs. There's also the smoke bombs, but again, I never use them so I don't know how efficient they are or are not. Joel is also on supplements. I mean, kind of. He finds pills throughout the games and also purple potted flowers that when he takes them, we can upgrade some of his skills. Like max health, listen mode distance, crafting speed, healing speed, weapon sway, and the ability to shiv. First up, I upgraded the shit out of my health because that's what I always go to in games. Then I upgraded the healing speed and threw some levels into crafting speed and listen mode. I like this system, obviously, because I fucking love gaining health. The Last of Us is an action-adventure game that has an AI that I fucking hated so much in specific situations. So early on in the game, there's a part where you have to fight other humans with your companions, which are Ellie and Tess. These motherfuckers were on my ass the whole time. They acted as if Ellie or Tess weren't actively fighting them in front of them, like standing in front of them fighting them. They went beyond the threat of who is actively attacking them to attack me, who is over there not attacking them at all. Which is wild to me, like you're getting your ass beat by this person and instead of dealing with the immediate threat, you're going to <laughs> deal with a threat that isn't even a threat to you at this point in time. What? Like seriously dude, what the fuck? Handle your own business before you come at me. Also, it seemed like they were hyper aware of where I was. Like I would have Joel up against a wall, not moving. Not fucking moving, because I know if you move, like, she will pop off. So I would just have Joel up against the wall, not even moving. And this guy walked do 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 past me. And I was like, okay, cool, I'm safe. And before I could even move, that dude would turn back around and start shooting at me over the wall. Like, I can't explain to you the absolute frustration that I felt. And this is the starting minutes. This is like the first, I don't know, maybe-ish hour, whatever, of getting into it. And I'm already like, well, this AI is bullshit. But I went on, even though I very much hated it so much to quit. But I, I, still, I still went on. I had another issue with the human AI. Like, there were times in the game where I was playing and I was like, I know that guy is gonna pop up out from this tiny little square that I know he cannot leave left or right without me seeing him. And I'm in this thing where I can see where if he leaves. And then I'm shot in the back by him. Are you kidding me? What the fuck? Cause like, I, you don't die instantly on the shot of the back. You get shot in the back and you turn around and you're like, Wow, that's that guy. He was, mm hmm Okay, he was in front of me just not even any kind of minutes ago, and now he's behind me. As if he was using fucking tunnels in the game. Wait, are there tunnels you can use in the game? These issues were only with the human enemies though, and I guess I shouldn't be all that mad because Ellie can be running up all on this cordyceps and they don't notice her at all, thank fuck. But if they did, I'd be fucking furious because holy shit, girl, get out of there. Outside of those critiques, there is no problem with the gameplay. I found the controls to be super smooth. I found the melee and the shooting to be very well integrated. Not integrated, what's the word? Intuitive? 
it felt smooth. There were also some quick time events in this action adventure game, which felt really natural, honestly. It just made sense. It made more sense than other games that I've played that have shoehorned quick time events into them, if you will. I really enjoyed it, honestly. Like, it just made sense. There are some swimming parts of the game, and I hated them. It felt clunky to me, much like this clunky transition to talk about how I really liked the listen mode. I thought listen mode was pretty clever to have the visual experience for that feeling when you know someone else is like right in the other room. I really enjoyed attempting a stealth playthrough with this being one of the many things that I could do to accomplish that. It was just super fucking useful. I want to talk just like a little tiny in depth about the enemies, like not even like in depth in depth, just let's reach the surface. Two days after being infected, a human transforms into the runner. Their appearance is mostly human, save for their glowing orange eyes. They stand hunched and their movement is sluggish, obscuring the fact that they are actually very fast and very hostile. Runners have maintained their eyesight and will charge at Joel when they spot him. Runners scared the shit out of me the first time I saw them. Their speed and spastic way they run was so unnerving. As I went on, they scared me less, but that run animation still makes me so uncomfortable. The clicker stage happens after a year of infection and changes the human host into what looks like a hybrid human fungus monstrosity. The fungus covering their face renders the clicker blind, and so it uses echolocations to spot their prey. They are more aggressive than the runners, and when a clicker gets their hands on their prey, it's bad news. Clickers freak me out. Their movement is twitchy and completely unnatural. The way they flare their arms when they run at you is so creepy to me. They're also almost everywhere, which becomes intimidating at some points. I felt the best way to approach them was through stealth, but I never had enough ships to take them all on. The final stage of infection in The Last of Us is the bloater. These grotesque monstrosities take years to develop. They are aggressive and strong, but slow moving. Their bodies are covered in the fungus and you can't even tell these were once human beings. It's quite disturbing. Like the clickers, they use echolocation to find their prey, as their face is, well, it's just fungus now. The bloater's design is so gross and upsetting. Imagine turning into that. It's just terrible. I was so nervous the first time I fought one of these, but all it really needed was for someone to take it out for a cocktail, a Molotov cocktail. I really love the design of this game. Like, it's that whole post-apocalyptic nature taking back what she is owed aesthetic to it, and it's so beautifully done. Like, honestly, I had to take so many stops to just, like, take in the scenery of this game. It is so fucking well designed and well executed. Like, fucking top notch, guys. The audio in this game is excellent. The sounds that the infected make are unsettling to say the least. The runners sound like distressed people crying and screaming. The clickers' noises are horrifyingly distorted screams as well as these guttural clicking noises. And the bloaters sound more like a possessed animal. All of their noises are enough to make me nervous. They just fucking sound terrifying. The voice acting performances in the game are excellent. I really enjoyed all the character portrayals. Really fucking compelling stuff. I can't get too much into it because I don't want to talk about spoilers, but damn. The music for The Last of Us is beautiful, emotional, and sets the tone very well. The PS4 controller also makes this cute little flashlight click noise, and any audio recordings you find will play through the PS4 controller too. I really like this. I kind of feel like there's a lack of PS4 controller audio support in games, and I am always surprised pleasantly by any fucking game using it. I don't know if the PS5 controllers have this ability, but if they don't, I will sorely miss it because it is super cute and, I don't know, endearing. 
I would absolutely recommend this game to anybody who is like me. Anybody who likes post-apocalyptic nature scenery, body horror, action-adventure games, with a strong fucking story, and excellent performances done by the voice acting crew, then The Last of Us is fucking for you. All of my critiques pale in comparison to how good I think personally I think this story is like I think it is worth playing through thank you guys so much for watching if you liked the video please like it and subscribe if you haven't already to all of my subscribers thank you guys so fucking much everyone let me know what you think in the comments section down below I really liked this game my social media links are in the description below all right guys I'll see you in the next video bye If you are a shotgun stan, and you cannot stand me being like, I'm not messing with that girl unless I have to, I understand. It's fine. You can dislike this video, and I, I will live with that. Oh boy!